Okay, so thank you very much for having us, and uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here uh, at JuliaCon to present our work finally in person. We are the developers and maintainers of Mutlia Graph.jl and uh, the Julia package uh, extending Graph.jl uh, for Mutlia Network Science that we're going to present to you today. So I'm going to basically to present a brief uh, theoretical introduction with an emblematic uh, scientific application, while Claudio will present a quick uh, tutorial showcasing uh, kind of the main feature of the current version of the package 1.1.4. So all the relevant resources and references are uh, in the resources section of our talk page on Judicon website, and these slides included. And you may ask, well, why multilayer network science? Well, the reason is that many real world complex interconnected phenomena are characterized by multiple types of interactions, multiple modalities, multiple scales, multiple levels of abstractions, multiple spatial and temporal scales. So um, if we want to informally sketch a bit uh, the overall computational framework, uh, conceptual framework of, uh, of multilayer network science. We just start by kind of the, um, describing the nomenclature we've implemented in multilayer uh, graphs.jl and incorporating the tutorial, of course. So the fundamental distinctions here are just between um, network and graph, just network is just the concrete instantiated data, right, interconnected data, what by graph we mean just the abstract relational object modeling. And network data, and the, and the distinction which is crucial in network science between vertex and node, because the vertex is just a local layer specific uh, um, kind of uh, node. Sometimes in in uh, in um, in the literature, you might find the term replica node, etc. Well, by node we mean the kind of global multilayer wide equivalence class of vertices. And sometimes in literature, we will find physical nodes and stuff like that. And the layer is just any kind of possible graph with all sorts of possible features. So weighted, unweighted, metadata, et cetera. While the interlayer is just any bipartite graph connecting the, gra the uh, layers and constructing, uh, therefore, the multilayer graph overall. So the concept we just introduced allows us to basically distinguish four types of interaction. The kind of self-interaction, which is just between any vertex and itself. A, the endogenous interaction, which is between any two distinct vertices within the same layer, and the uh, exogenous one, which is basically uh, any the, the interaction between any distinct vertices within di distinct layers, and intertwining, which is uh, distinct vertices basically belonging to distinct layers, but, but representing the same exact uh, physical underlying node. And here, of course, we just uh, delineate the basic taxonomy of, of all the multilayer uh, graph types or classes that are all implemented in multilayer graphs to JL. So more formally, of course, it's possible to generalize the uh, good and old, uh, you know, agency or weight uh, tensor representation for monolayer graphs into the multilayer counterpart. And here, of course, we're using just uh, Einstein summation convention, and just for convenience, we linearly de decouple uh, or decompose uh, at last uh, line uh, just to showcase uh, the, uh, the different types of interaction we just uh, shown before. So, but for all practical purposes, it's very, very useful to flatten these multilayer adjacency tensor into the so-called superadjacency matrix, which is uh, where basically the diagonal blocks you see uh, represent the uh, intralayer connectivity, so connectivity within the same layer, while the off-diagonal blocks represent uh, interlayer connectivity, so connectivity between dif uh, distinct layers. But as I said before, multilayer graphs to JL extends fully graphs to JL. Uh, therefore, it inherits, it inherits all monolayer uh, methods and metrics and descriptors like multilayer degree centrality and von Neumann entropy and so forth. And um, but again, just have really, really little time. So just say that multilayer graphs have been adopted to model the structure and dynamics of a very wide variety of uh, um, complex systems. And just in the interest of time, I would like to. I decided to focus very briefly on multilayer network epidemiology, just because of the COVID-19 pandemic, very recent, and the policy relevance of it all. And what it turns out from the literature is that explicitly modeling human contact networks, uh, and therefore taking into account the stratification into different locations and different settings of their human interactions is very, very crucial to perform very, very good in, in very well in uh, infectious disease epidemiological tasks like short-term individual and, and ensemble forecast or, short, or now casting procedures or individual and ensemble uh, prospective and prospective scenario analysis. So very quick look at the limitations of the current version of the package. There are a lot of those. Uh, we need to add the functionality for, for import and export multilayer network data types. We need to, for example, a data visualization functionality because I, we don't know exactly how we'll do it because maybe we develop a new package or maybe uh, we just uh, extend graphmaki.jl or something like that. But that's uh, kind of uh, a, few, a few references, theoretical and applicative references. And then 
uh, say that uh, there is uh, enough theory for now, so I just, uh, let's take a look at the tutorial by Claudio, so please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pietro. So, as he said, we're going to shift to a brief tutorial. Uh, all right, so the mouse should go this way. Very well. So, uh, as you see, straight from from the beginning, we don't only load the multi graphs.jl, but also other, other graphs packages. That's because when it comes to layers and uh, interlayers, we chose to take a, a graph wrapper approach to allow you to use uh, uh, all, uh, all your, your favorite, uh, favorite uh, graph, graph types to underlie underlie your layers and uh, interlayers. So here we instantiate the node that uh, we will be representing in, uh, in uh, our graph. And then uh, we showcase uh, some, some constructors for layers and uh, interlayers. So the first, uh, uh, the first constructor we see is a constructor, of, constructor for a layer whose underlying graph is a simple director graph from uh, graphs, uh, graphs uh, dot, uh, dot uh, JL. And uh, this is uh, its name that, uh, that, that uh, you, can, you can later use to slice uh, the multi-layer graph once uh, it is it is uh, it is constructed. These are the nodes that uh, will be rep re will be represented as 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 vertices in this layer, and and this is actually a direct configuration model 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 constructor so you so you provide the in degree and the out degree degree distributions and uh, an algorithm the Claytman Wang algorithm that we contributed to graphs.jl will sample the two graphical in degree and out degree sequences for uh, for for this layer, the ne next constructor, very briefly, as uh, an simple weighted direct graph uh, uh, graph underlying it from simple weighted graphs uh, graphs uh, graphs the JL. It's a slightly different constructor, so you don't have the direct uh, configuration model, but uh, you just uh, specify the number of edges and it will uh, distribute them uh, randomly as uh, as need the last one is uh, instead uh, the most uh, general constructor for uh, layers layers uh, that we have in that uh, it allows you to specify all the details uh, of the un underlying graph as you see fit then you put uh, all the layers in an in an order list. The order is important to later index the weight tensor. Then you create uh, the interlayers very similarly to layers, so we won't uh, spend much time on it. You put them in a list, and then you are finally ready to to instantiate uh, the multi the layer graph, just pass the layers, interlayers. You don't have to specify all the interlayers. They may be a lot and it's boring and a lot of work. So you just give the structure as a parameter of those interlayers you don't want to specify, specify manually. I understand my time could be up, so we just skip to, to the end. Where we, uh, here we just perform uh, some basic uh, manipulation, so add node, vertices, edges. It's all com compatible with uh, graphs. Uh, the .jl, and in the end, when we have 
we have some metrics that we had to to overload from graphs.jl in order to get consistent results from the multi-layer to the to the monolayer case so i'm finished and and thank you very much Do you have any visualization tools built in to uh, visualize the multi-layered graphs, or do you have to use like another library? I haven't uh, uh, heard the questions. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you have any visualization tools to visualize the multi-layered graphs built in uh, to this? Mm. No, we haven't. In fact, it's uh, an open issue. I think we put it uh, in the beginning, so the the most important uh, open issues we have are uh, first uh, the data visualization that i can use the mouse maybe here and the second one is is uh, to allow the user to specify multiple layers in a, in a single in a single aspect and this and this would also allow allow to map uh, hypergraphs uh, to multi layer layer uh, layer graphs so yes so the, the plots are not, the visualization is not uh, is not uh, there yet and i guess this is more like a direct question it's okay if like um, can you create a layer from an adjacency matrix directly or is that like uh, uh, you can give it an edge list. It's okay. a constructor we haven't uh, haven't shown, but uh, it's there. Yes. So if you can convert that to an, uh, but 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 also you can uh, instantiate the uh, underlying graph and then pass it on to the layer interlayer. It should work. Thank you. No problem. All right. Let's thank our speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.